No. No buzz. A Just Bees book club. Um, prior to reading The Haunted Pool, I think I knew about two things about George Sand. Number one, that she was a woman. Um, number two, that she prominently features early on in the... <sighs> so the remembrance of things past. Uh, in Search of Lost Time, Proust's novel. Um, one of the first things that happens in that book is a discussion of... Um, it's in sort of the Mama's Kiss section. Um, the one of my favorite bits of that whole thing, honestly. Um, something that that has hit has stayed with me even more than the Madeline stuff has, honestly. Um, but in part of that section, the narrator talks about his grandmother, like loving to give books, um, but not wanting to give books without some sort of intellectual merit. And so at some point, it's his grandma, I think it's his grandma, um, could be his mom, it's been a minute since I went back to it, um, reads some of uh, Francois Le Champy, um, Francois Le Champy, I think, um, the, the Francis and the Mushroom, I think, is like basically what it would sort of directly translate to, um, to the narrator when he's uh, young, in bed, and can't go to sleep. And so, in my head, Sand is, you know, like, a huge, dense French author who, from, you know, the late 19th century, early 19th century, and, uh, that's not, that's not what this is. <laughs> um... So as I've as I've, I've I read the book, of course, I read the Haunted Pool. Um, I guess it is the first in a sort of tetralogy of um, pastorals that that Sand wrote that are like some of her more famous stuff. Um, and I found it just kind of at random um, in this edition from Shameless Hussy Press, which had its which had its own neat has its own neat little. History. Um, this edition, copyright 1976, Shameless Hussy Press, third printing. I'm just going to read from the afterword for this, because it's kind of neat. Um, it's uh, signed Alta, Shameless Hussy Press, April 26, 1976, and it's written all in lowercase. Um, Alta, I found out, was the, the, the person behind Shameless Hussy Press. Um, if you look at them up they are sort of widely referred to as like the first explicitly feminist press or first explicitly second wave feminist press um, in the United States uh, they are Bay Area folks also um, but yes the afterword to this edition of the haunted pool begins I discovered a ragged copy of the Andre Mora uh, biography of George Sand in parentheses Leela and became more curious from reading it than I had been before. I therefore tried to find books she had herself she had written herself translated into English. The task the task proved impossible. The latest books of hers published in the States seems to be Grandmother Tales, published in the 30s and now out of print. As for her novels, they were unattainable. After the edu ed educational network broadcast a series on Sand, the public um, <clears throat> the public demand intensified, and bookstores began actively searching for her work. John Wong in Moe's bookstore in Berkeley heard of my plan to publish her work and saved this for me. Uh, the early version of this book was published in 1890 by Dodd, Mead, and Company uh, in New York. Uh, John Dodd has been very kind about our project. This book is a facsimile of, its of the original with only minor corrections and punctuation. Um, skipping over some stuff. Uh, I can well imagine that in George Sand's hectic life, she often fantasized about a faithful monogamous lover whose only other interest was caring for his children and plowing the earth. Um, and that's sort of just a description of, uh, of, of the book. So I will, um, <clears throat> this book, although by the most famous, famous shameless hussy we have ever published was published in the same spirit. And for the same reason, all as all the others, I wanted it and there was no other way to get it. Um, which is like, it's still, <clears throat> at this point, probably you can get a bunch of shitty print on demand versions of George Sand would be my guess. Um, but she's also like, you know, maybe it's, 
maybe it's where you know I work. Could be a number of things, but in my sort of anecdotal experience, she is not a particularly well like circulated author at this point still, you know, some 60 years later, uh, whatever it is, 76, is that 30 to, oh, and then 50, so 50, almost exactly 50 years ago, a half century later, <laughs> um, then, then this was published, uh, this, this Shameless Hussey version of the, the Dodd Mead 1890 version translation of, of, of The Haunted Pool. Um, I think it's more commonly translated as the Devil's Pool, because um, like I think the, the French is uh, you know the pool of the devil basically, um, but not my impression anecdotally, George Sand is like is basically what like you I have seen I have definitively seen more copies of biographies of George Sand than I have of primary works by her just sort of circulating in the world um which is interesting um like i said the, the two things i knew about her uh she was read to proust and that she was a woman right um anyway um the haunted pool is neat it's a like a it's a romp um so yeah i came in expecting this very heady sort of you know you know mid-19th century french literature um, which you don't associate with uh, adventure stories, really, or at least I don't. But that's more or less what this is. Um, it has a very weird frame. Um, this is, this, yeah, here, from the very beginning of this book, there's no page numbers on this edition either, which is very weird. Um, when I began the when I began with the haunted pool, a series of rustic tales which I purposed uh, collecting under the title of Tales of a Hemp Dresser. I had no system, no design of revolutionizing literature. No one makes a revolution by himself, and there are some revolutions, especially in the arts, which humanity accomplishes without quite knowing how, because it is everybody who takes them in hand. But this is not, but this is not applicable to the romance of rural manners. It, is, it has existed in all ages and in all forms, sometimes pompous, sometimes effective, sometimes simple. I have said, and must here repeat, that the dream of a country life has always been the ideal of cities and even of courts. I've done nothing new in following the declivity which leads civilized man to charm to the charms of primitive life. I have not yet wished either. I have not wished either to create a new language or seek a new style. Yet I have been told so in a goodly number of articles. But I know better than any than anyone else what is true about my own intentions, and I'm always astonished that criticism seeks so far when the simplest idea, the commonest circumstances, are the only inspirations to which art products owe their being. Um. And that's signed George Sand, uh, Nohant, April 12th, 1851. Um, so there must have been some fucking discourse around the, the, these, uh, these pastorals, these pastorals um, for Sand to be like, I didn't mean to make a revolution, y'all. Just chill. I was just telling some fun little stories. Um, and then it opens with, you know, The Haunted Pool, chapter one, the author to the reader, um, a poem in French. Um, and then that poem is like situated below a series of Holbein paintings, Holbein uh, paintings that um, it starts this very weird frame that kind of makes like it seems as though there it, well there, it, there is a frame narrator who is like thinking about these paintings and using that as a way to transition into the story of. Oh God! What is her name? That's <laughs> um, chapter two. A couple pages later, plowing. I had been looking for a while, a long while, and with profound melancholy, at Holbein's plowman. And I was walking in the country, and I was walking in the country, pondering over the life in the fields and the destiny of the husbandsmen. Um, and so she goes on to start talking about a very specific thing. And this is like a very Proustian sort of mode, I think, where um, I'm, I'm uh, obviously that's uh, uh, that's backwards from history, but um, Proust will often do a thing. This is like what I wrote my senior thesis on, I guess, um, where he will sort of be abstractly pontificating on a sort of situation or um, a you know a, a regular occurrence or something you know or just like a name, 
Um, and then we'll sort of seamlessly transition from pontificating to describing in great detail a, a particular instance of that idea or that occurrence. Um, there's a thing I really found extremely impressive in him the first time I read him, and, and I'm, I'm doing so similarly this time, although in, in different circumstances. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's where, maybe this is where he got it from. I don't know. Uh... That is, yeah, Germain, Germain, his father-in-law, one day said to him, you really must make up your mind to take another wife. It is nearly two years since you lost my daughter and your, and your eldest boy is seven years old. You are close to 30, my lad, and you know that after that age, a man is considered in our neighborhood too old to marry again. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, it's a story of a man named Germain who is going off to a neighboring city to meet with a prospective wife, and um, he is to be accompanied on the way there by a young maid who's very pretty and who is going to work for another sort of neighboring um, feudal lord for the summer, basically. And they sort of start to hit it off. They end up getting a little lost, and they, and they find a little pool, and they drink from it, and then they try to get unlost, and they can't, and they just keep circling back into the pool, and then the next morning they leave, and they separate, and uh, Germain meets his potential bride-to-be, and is like, nah, I'm good, and Marie uh, gets uh, sort of assaulted by her prospective boss to be and is like, I'm out. And then they meet up and uh, there's confessions of love that are rejected and then uh, life goes on and Jermaine's all depressed and then he asks her to marry him again and she says yes. The end. It's uh, It's like... I don't know. I don't really have anything more intelligent to say. I've already said more than I thought I was going to say. Um, the Haunted Pool by George Sand. I don't know. It was like a, a fun time. I would I would like to read the other pastorals. I would be very curious about the Francoise and the Mushroom. Um, you know, like Proust got it read to him, at least the fictional one. And I think that guy's all right. Thanks for not watching. <laughs>